this video. Shalom Israel, Most High Christ bless. Uh, pleasant morning to you all. Alright, welcome again to the daily bread this morning. Um, let's, let's test for the audio and the visual. Are you hearing me? Are you seeing me? How is the audio? Loud and clear? Secondly, um, is there a soldier, is there a brother online that can scribe this morning? All of the above. Shalom, sister Leah. Um, Shalom family, good morning, good morning. All praises. Alright, so the audio is good. Um, yeah, so if there's a brother online that can scribe, please confirm with me. If there's someone online that can scribe on deck. All praises. Um, Josiah, Judah, Israel. All praises. Thank you, sir. Step away for just a second. All right, all praises to the Most High Israel. Um, all honor and glory and praise to the Most High God of Israel. So, um, we're going to get started this morning. Sisters, cover your heads. 
brothers and cover your heads. Let's face Jerusalem, let's send up the prize. <coughs> Heavenly Father, God of Israel, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the poor and the glory. Heavenly Father, God of Israel, we give you thanks this morning for life, for your mercies, and for your blessings, dear God. Lord, we give you thanks for health, and we give you thanks for strength. Dear God, we, as we are about to be fed by the word, Holy Father, as this word has, is about to be received, pray Lord, that you may touch our minds, O oh God, that we may be able to understand, dear Heavenly Father, and to apply your wisdom. Dear God, we ask, Lord, that you may protect and guide our leadership, Heavenly Father. Lord, pray Lord, that you may provide doors of utterance as they push this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Dear God, Heavenly Father, pray that it may bless their hosts. Pray that it may continue to bestow much wisdom on them, Heavenly Father, so they may continue to lead us and we may continue to follow in humility. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us of our sins and the sins of our forefathers. Thank you for remembering the covenant you have made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Heavenly Father, give us strength to endure and to overcome our trials and overcome our sins. Help us, Heavenly Father, dear God, to love one another. As we come together and gather together, pray, Lord, that you may help us to overcome the burdens of sin, Heavenly Father, and the vision and everything, Lord, dear God, Lord, that cause us as a people to, to hate each other and to not live in unity. Dear God, we ask, Lord, that you may show forth your mercies and your grace on the brothers and the sisters who are afflicted, who are sick, Heavenly Father, we pray you may bring forth healing. Lord, pray, Lord, that you may remember the sisters right now who is about to, who is expecting, who is about to give birth. Pray, Lord, that you may strengthen them, you may strengthen their home, that you may bring forth, a, that they may bring forth safe delivery so we may be able to multiply and grow to become as the sand of the sea. Dear God, we give you thanks. Pray, Lord, that you remember our enemies. Lord, Whatever plots, diabolical plots that they have, uh, that they are devising against your nation and against your people. Pray, Lord, that you may return it upon their head and you may bring forth the judgment written on our enemies. Lord, we give you thanks. These are the mercies we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Shalom again, Israel. Um, Officer David and with me this morning reading. Um, Officer Jonah. Officer Jonah. Ah. All right, so let's read the disclaimer. Go ahead with that. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. Okay. All right. Um, so the topic this morning is, are we prepared for the battle this year? So are we prepared for the battle? And the reason why um, I am, I'm going to stress on this year for a reason, because we have seen from previous years, every year, the battle gets harder. You know, um, if it's not our enemies coming against us, it's our it's enemies among us who is rising up to what? To want to hinder the truth, to want to disrupt the movement of the Most High. Alright? So, are we prepared for the battle this year? Um, I, I, be, well, let me just speak from my time being in the truth. Every year, there is some level of trial, you know, congregationally. And that's, that's pretty much what I'm dealing with this morning. Because, you know, the elder went over three trials of faith that includes um, 
marital trial, personal trial, and congregational trial. You know, um, people, you are aware, speaking much evil against our leadership, within and without. You know, the slander, um, you know, how we are being portrayed in the media as a hate group, you know, um, and, and therefore it's a battle, it's a fight, you know, for, for all of us. Um, so let's open up with um, Acts 14 22. Acts 14 22. Let's read that. The book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples. And that's the reason for these classes. So that what? We can confirm, we can build up the flock, we can prepare the, 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 the flock for what? For times of trials, for times of, of, of the battle. You know, continue. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. And, and we exhort you through these classes, the leadership. You know, we have classes every day. It's for a reason, and it's to prepare and to exhort you. Read. And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And through much tribulation, it didn't say little. It says through much tribulation, we're going to enter the kingdom. It's through much tribulation that we're going to raise up our people out of the, the decayed state that we are in. It's through much tribulation that we're going to move from country to country, um, spreading this gospel, right? It's through much tribulation that we're going to endure our trials, all right? Never forget that, Israel, you know? So our enemies isn't going to just stop, watch, and observe, and make it easy for us, right? There's going to be, this is going to be through much war, and, and, and I'm speaking about spiritual war, right? Um, so from there, um, get me, <clears throat> get me Matthew 10, 16, read from 16 to, to 22. The book of St. Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So it, it's a dangerous job for, for us as the servants of the Mosai. You know, what we do, places where we go, you know, it, it's a dangerous job. The Mosai says that he sends us as, read that again. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. In the midst of wolves. In the midst of wolves. Read. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And harmless as doves. So we have to be wise. You know, our leadership able to go from country to country, continent to continent. And it's because of what? Because of their wisdom that they can what? They can, you, they can make it back home. You know, that's how dangerous it is in this truth. You know, when you take up the role as a leader. You know, um, that, that is, is if, if, and if we are leaders, and when, I'm, when I say leaders, you know, the leadership breaks down from the bishop, the deacons, the captains, the officers, the brothers, of the soldiers and the brat that, that's leadership you know the ranking men and the structure that's leadership and being leadership is full-time now for us men to um and also women deacon malachi stresses a lot on being a revolutionary and you know it's full-time now that we start wrapping our mind around you know the dangers that we will face as israelites you know, the most I say, we shall be hated of all men. We're going to read that here. So read down to 22. Verse 17. But beware of men. So the scripture says, But beware of men. But beware of men. Read. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Read on. Verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. Read on. For so, so, so um, more and more, you will see these things start to, to come to pass. The, this is a sign that the, the, the disciples ask for a sign. What is the sign of the coming of the Son of, 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 of God? What is the sign of the end? So these things you're going to see gradually start to come to pass. Right? Read on. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Verse 19. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how... Or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Because Christ is with us. 
Once we study, once we are in the spirit, you know, Christ is with us. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Read on. Verse 20. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. There you go. Read on. Verse 21. <clears throat> and, the brother shall, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. So we don't know who, who among us is going to have to endure through trials like these. Where you what? You your father raising up against you, your child raising up against you. What other um read it read that verse again? Is verse 19? 21. 21, yeah. Go ahead. And brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And and we've seen that. Brother shall deliver up a brother to death. You know, the most is, is is giving us um you know, he's allowing us to experience what it's going to be like. We've seen a little of that. It's going to escalate more and more. Read on. And the father, the child. And the father, the child. Read. And the child. So whether you being that child at home, you know, um, you're living with an unbelieving parent, you know, you, you may experience this. Read on. And the children shall rise up against their parents mm -hmm. and ahead. cause them to be put to death. Read on. Verse 22. And he shall be hated of all men. So this is the point. It says, we shall be hated of all men. Read. For my name's sake. For Christ's sake. For Christ's sake, we will be hated. And if you know, we go moving from place to place. You know, we're walking around. We, we being that beacon of light. We, we, we wear our fringes. We let our light shine. People is going to see. And we're going to have a lot of enemies. But continue. That's it. 22, right? That's it? No, that's, there's more. Go ahead. But be but he that endureth to the end. This is the point. But he that endureth to the end. So every year there is something the Mosa is trying to build us up. You know, um, he's putting us through a little every year. You know, and it's we, we are expected to grow from that, to learn from that. Read on. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Shall be saved. Get me Second Thessalonians 3, 1 to 2. And also, just to add about um, we have enemy in everywhere. I remember, recall when we were in Port and, and when we were in Port Oh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go and bring that to okay. <laughs> In fact, uh, you're in the spirit. Um, yeah, let's read that. Second Thessalonians. Right. Chapter. Second Thessalonians 3 1 to 2. You're in the spirit, obviously. So, um, second, yeah, second Thessalonians 3 1 to 2. The book of Second Thessalonians, chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us. So we have to pray for the leadership. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a dangerous work, you know, um, to really go out there, represent our people, put our lives on the line. It is a dangerous work. So the scripture says to what? Finally, brethren, pray for us. Pray for the leadership. Pray for the men who you see go out bringing this gospel to the four corners of the earth. No matter what city, country, continent. Read on. That the word of the Lord may have free course. That the word of the Lord may have free course. So based on what you were saying, there are places that we go here in Jamaica. And as of late, I, I realize it. I, I like to observe and watch the people. Especially when we go in the town areas. Mm -hmm. You have people come out. They have their phone. They're on the phone like one lady. We, were, we, we set up camp right across from her. Look at this. She, she conducts a business. That is that her 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 the building is totally enclosed. enclosed it is enclosed, and her excuse is that we're gonna have to turn off the box or turn it down or you know we are affecting her business or customers. She can't hear her customers on the line. <laughs> um, but there are times when I'm at camp, mm -hmm. I receive a call. Mm -hmm. The person on the other line can hear me, and I can hear them. Exactly. But she's maybe about. A hundred, well, about a hundred meters across. Not that much. Maybe, maybe, no, not that maybe much. About, maybe about, maybe 20, about 30 meters across. 30 meters yeah. across, upstairs, enclosed. in an enclosed space. <laughs> so we went there one week, complaints, complaints after complaints. Right? It's a free, what's that? It's, it's a, a free a, zone. Right. So we don't need a permit. It's a free zone. And based on what I've heard, there have been a lot of events around that surrounding. You know, so um, 
first week, because it's three weeks we went to right, Portland. Three weeks. three weeks. The second week is the same thing. The third week is the same thing. And until the police what? Eventually the police came. came. The police came and said to shut. Not, not, not giving us a reason. Do we, need, do we have a permit? Yes, we did seek out to, to receive a permit. The, the parish council said to us that we don't need a permit. Right. It's a free zone. You know, I'm telling you, there are people... That, that's why the scripture says in Matthew 10, beware of men. Exactly. Beware of men. We have to watch our surroundings. And just to add, officer, because <laughs> the police station is right, is about, that's about another 100 meters from where we are. Mm. And I have seen policemen who peep through the window and listen to us the previous two weeks. No one, none of them came down and said, oh, you're not operating with a permit, so you need to pack up. And then for some reason now, all of a sudden, they get a call. Right. And somebody comes. The police. There was more than one police. No, no, the there. police told us that once we maintain the numbers, right, you know, we we good. We good. We good. So you know, I'm just just, just the case in point. You know, these are some of the the reasons, as the scripture say, pray for us. Read that verse again from the top. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse one. Finally, brethren, pray for us. That the word of the Lord may have free course. And, and the leadership would give their, their experience on places that we go from, um, from place to place, country to country. Read on. And be glorified, Read even on. as it is with you. Verse 2. And that he may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. So that's that person. A person like that is unreasonable. I, when we were at Alpha Tree a couple of years ago, there's this school teacher because I he he came and was speaking to me, and when he had it's like he came and said, "Oh, um, what what is this about?" You know, and I started to explain, and the man was just there quiet. So I, 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 I'm I'm judging his demeanor, and I'm saying, "Okay, he's quiet. That means that, you know, he may be getting, right. you know, may maybe receiving the understanding." So for a second, he paused and turn around, look at me real stern and say, I'm going to do everything in my power to stop you men. I'm That's what he said. Yeah. He said, I'm going to do everything in my power to stop you guys. And he walked away. But, you know, the scripture, Deacon brought this out last week. Um, Acts 5. Let me get that. Acts 5, 38. Look here. This is not the work of men. This is the work of the Most High. So anybody who wants to stop us, they're going to get through the Most High before, right? Mm -hmm. You know, their hands are too short to fight That's against right. God. So let's read that real quick. Read from 35. The book of Acts, Acts chapter 5, 5, 5 reading right. from verse 35. And said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what he intend to do as touching these men. So you come, you make a statement like, I'm going to do everything in my power. You are a clay and dust. Who is you to really stand up and speak against the Moses prophet? So, it's the same thing we're reading here in the scriptures. It says what? And said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. Read. Verse 36. For, these, for before these days rose up Theodos, Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. Mm -hmm. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. Meaning what? They, they tried to raise up to stop the, 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 the disrupt the gospel. But the most I said what? They were put to naught. Read on. Verse 37. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days... And, and we've seen that, right? The few years past, you know, men who rose up among us, they try to hinder and try to disrupt the movement, you know. But it continues to grow stronger because what? The Mosa is fighting us, fighting for us because what? We keep the commandments. Read on. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew mm -hmm. away much people after is him. Is that 38? That's verse 37. All right, go ahead. He also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Mm -hmm. Verse 38. And now I say unto you, Refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Yeah, so if we if we are false prophets, if we if um whatever label that they have to whatever label they put on us, 
If this is not the truth, the scripture says it's going to come to pass. So why worry? What, why the, all the, the energy, why you have to be on social media day in, day out, try to do what? Try to slander, try to speak evil. Because if it is of man, and if you know it's of man, you know, why spend your time? Move on with your life. Exactly. Read on. Verse 39. No, that's, that's what I wanted. I think you want, you want. Oh, verse 39. Right, is, go ahead, is, go ahead. Oh, yes. Verse 39. <laughs> But if it be of God, but if it be of God, he cannot overthrow it. Cannot overthrow it. The gates of hell will not prevail. Read on. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Even to fight against God. Who can fight against God? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so from there, let's get um, First Maccabees one eleven to fifteen. Because you would have, we will we will see. We will see the, the heat. We will see people rise up against us, rise up out of the body. And what? That's going to what? That's going to, um, your faith is going to try. Your faith is going to get put to the test. Um, let's read this. The book of First Maccabees in the Apocrypha, chapter 1, reading from verse 11. In those days when there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we, had, we have had much sorrow. First and we've seen, that, we've seen that happen recently as well. You know, um, brothers going to the SPLC, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making a covenant with them to do what? Farming an alliance against us. Right? Continue. Verse 12. So this, so this device pleased them well. Verse 13, then certain of the people were so forward hearing that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Mm -hmm. So you, you had people who among us, our very own people, went to form alliance with our enemies to do what? For what intent? What purpose and intent? To stop and to disrupt the movement. Read on. Verse 14, whereupon they built a place of exercise. Okay, that's, that's what I wanted. Get me First Chronicles twelve seventeen. Real quick, First Chronicles twelve seventeen. Cause what we don't want to be known. By the end of the day, we're gonna get put to the test. Our faith is going to get put to the test. And what we would, what we don't want, we don't want to be the one to be labeled as a traitor. It's the worst thing that you can ever think of. You know, in, in, in to, to be a traitor to your people, right? So, um, yeah, let's read that. First Chronicles 12, 17. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 17. Because what? Naturally, as we see these things start to come to pass, you know, you shall be hated of all men. You know, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. You know, naturally, what, what starts to kick in? Fear. Fear. Fear starts to kick in. You know, our hands start to get weak. We're going to read that in the, in the history of Nehemiah as well. Our hands start to get weak. And it's a tactic. But what we have to understand is that we have to build our faith. Because there is a God. And who can fight against God? It says, if God is for us, who can be against us? So, let's read that. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 17. And David went out to meet them and answered and said unto them, if ye, be, if ye be come peaceably unto me to help me, mine heart shall be knit unto you. But if ye... But so if ye, so th these were the other tribes who came to David um, because that's at the time he, was, he would have been anointed by all of Israel to be king. Right, read on. But if ye be come to betray me to mine enemies... So, so everyone who is within or a part of us who, who is right now within, within IUIC waiting sitting to plot to bring out what they are they are plotting it says what read that uh but if he be come to betray me to if, mine enemies but if you come to betray us to who to mine enemies to mine enemies read seeing there is no wrong in mine hands and no wrong you see no wrong right you see no wrong you we, we, we speak about leviticus 5 but you see no wrong and you examine you examine not but we, 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 you go with the slander, you go with the heat. But the scripture says, once there is no wrong, once we are blameless, then what? 
the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. And rebuke it. So whatever traitorous act there is, the Mosa is going to look down and rebuke it. Once we are what? Once we are firmly grounded in the commandments. Right? So, 1 Maccabees 2.41. 1 Maccabees 2.41. The book of 1st Maccabees chapter 2 reading from verse 41 at that time therefore they decreed saying whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Sabbath day we will fight against him neither will we die all as our brethren that were murdered in the secret places right so this is when the, the king came to Madatias tried to induce him to to be friends with the king the, the king's officers the king's officers came to Madatias. They tried to induce Madatias to do what? To follow the customs of the king. Because he was a leader in Israel. So once you could turn, you know, the, once they could turn Madatias, they would have been able to overturn the fate right. of, 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 of the other men. Right? The younger men. The nation to that. Read on. Verse 42. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians who were mighty men of Israel. Even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. So, so that's what I want to point out. It says, it says, all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. When it says volunt when you're volunt when you volunteer to do so, you do it willingly, right? Sorry. So it says voluntary voluntarily devoted unto the law. And that's what we have to do. That's what our forefathers, that's the spirit that they had, and that's the spirit we, we must have. So it says Read 43 now. Verse 43. Also, all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them and were a stay unto them. Read on. Verse 44. So they joined their forces and smote sinful, sinful men in their anger. Read on. And wicked men in their wrath. Go ahead. But the rest fled to the heathen for secure. So it says they, 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 they slew wicked man and sinful man. Right? But some went to the what? To the heathen. To the heathen for succor. Succor, meaning what? For safety. safety. Right? Continue. Verse 45. Then Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. Go ahead. And what children whose, and what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. So these men were valiant. You know, they didn't have fear. Right? Because when you really think about it, fear is sin. I think it's somewhere here. We're gonna get that. Um, so that's the spirit. We have to pray. We have to pray for that spirit. The spirit to be valiant. The spirit to have courage. Right? When Joshua took over, right? The Mosai anointed Joshua leader over Israel. What did the Mosai, um, you know, charge Joshua to do? To not be fearful. To be brave. To be courageous. Right? And, and therefore, that's the spirit that we must have. Read on. Verse, Verse 47. 47. Go ahead. They pursued also after the proud men, and the work prospered in their hand. And the work what? Prospered in their hand. So once we, once we are voluntarily devoted to the law, the work is going to prosper. The work will prosper in our hands. Read on. Verse 48. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles and out of the hand of kings. Neither suffer they the sinner to triumph. So it says, we won't suffer sinners to triumph. Read on. Verse 49. Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now have pride and rebuke gotten strength. And the so it says, Now have pride and rebuke gotten strength. Read. And the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Because, yes, because when you look around, what is pride? Can we get that precept for pride? Um... Sirach, is it 10, 12? Let's get what pride is. Sirach 10 and verse 12. The book of Ecclesiasticus, also called Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 10, verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God, mm -hmm. Go ahead. and his heart is turned away from his maker. Verse 13. For pride is the beginning of sin. So you see, for pride is the beginning of sin. Read. And he that ate and he that had it shall pour out abomination. Shall pour out abomination. Go back now. First Maccabees. 
verse, where was that verse? 40, 49. 49. The book of First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 49. Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction, and the wrath of the indignation. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law. Do you see that? So he charged his sons to be what? Zealous for the law. Zealous for the law, because it was a time of battle. It was a time of war. Un un unlike today, when we're not fighting a physical war, but the battle is we the battle is still there for us to fight. Right? Continue. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. And give you our lives for the covenant of our fathers. Right? Continue. Verse 51. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So when, when we understand and we see what's going on, we see the, 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 the condition of the battle. We see our enemies are coming against us. It says what? Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So we have to call to remembrance. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Right? So if you have that fear, fearful spirit, right, you should be able to go back in the history of your forefather and see how we went, how we dealt with the battles we face. The battles they face, that's what gives us strength. That's what gives us courage. Right. Right? We pray for the most high to remove the spirit of fear. Because that's what it says in um, Timothy 1 verse 7. It said, the most I haven't given us the spirit of fear. Right? Um, continue. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. So that's how we're going to receive an everlasting name and honor. When what? We have laid down our lives for our people. Right? We have... Um, we're, we call what he charged his son to be zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Right? Continue. And that's one thing we have to wrap our mind around. We may go out, but we may not come back in. Yeah. Right? That's, that's the kind of, you know, meditation that we need to have. We normally focus on the what? The sweet part of the scriptures. But, you know, as the scriptures say, it's sweet in my mouth and bitter in my belly. We have to come to terms with, you know, the reality that these things are going to happen. And if you self-examine and evaluate where you are at, you should what? You should be fasting, you should be praying, you should be preparing yourself. Right? But, as I said before, are you prepared for the battle this year? Right? Because what? We, we have to be vigilant. We cannot be um, composed and then complacent. what? Complacent, right? And we want to, as the scripture says in Sirach 2, we must prepare for tribulation, for temptation. Um, where are you left off? Um, I'm about to read verse 52. Yeah, read on. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 52. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation? Mm -hmm. And was and it was imputed, and it was inputted into him for righteousness. What verse is yeah, verse, verse yeah, 52. 52. Read, that, read that again. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation? So it says, Abraham was found faithful in temptation. Abraham did not yield to temptation. Abraham overcame. Our forefathers overcame. And we are our forefathers. Read on. And it was inputted into him for righteousness. For righteousness. Read on. Verse 53. Joseph in the time of his distress kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. So who say you can't keep the commandment when you're in distress? There you, go. you know, a lot of times people tend to what? To, to make haste, to leave. Leave in times of trouble. But it says Joseph in time of distress, being in, in, in prison for no reason mm -hmm. because of a lie. Right. You understand? He had to endure for 15 years being in prison. He was distressed. But what? He was able to endure. He was faithful. Read. Verse 54. Phineas. No, read, finish out 53. Read it from the top. Verse 53. Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. Read on. Verse 54. Phineas, our father, in being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. So it says, Phineas, our, our father, in, in being zealous and fervent, Obtain the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Read on. Verse 55. Jesus, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Israel. That's Joshua. Read on. Verse 56. K 
Caleb for bearing witness before the congregation received the heritage of the land. So why are we reading these things? Remember the verse above. It says, remember the acts of our fathers. So when you remember and you immerse yourself, you read the history and you see how our forefathers dealt with their trials and how God was, God, as the scripture says in Sirach 2, God is not going to confound you. None that trust in him is going to confound so when you start to read that now, what? What? You start to what? The most I start to put the spirit on you. You know, you start to be able to deal with that fear. You start to be able to develop that spirit of being valiant and courageous. Sisters too. Judith, you know, those are your examples. You know, um, Hebe, those are your examples. The women who put their lives on the line as well. Because when you read Acts, I think it's Acts 1, uh, it talks about... Um, you know, um, the women, the, the women too. Uh, I'm going to get that later. But continue. Verse 57. And you know, so this goes right back yeah, to right. even Romans 15 and 4. It says, whatsoever thing we're written, exactly. what time was written for our learning. Right. So we must pretty much go back. We are in the midst of um, tribulation. You must go back to the scriptures and read exactly. Because um, chances are four, our forefathers were in the same situation. So we need to go back to the scriptures and read and see how did they overcome, what did they do. So okay. the scriptures are there for edification. Exactly. So that's what we have to go back to. Because normally when stress take us, hard times mm -hmm. take us, the last thing that we see for counsel is within the scriptures. You know? Exactly. So when you can go and you can look at the history, you, you, the leadership, when I've been going over this, it's for a reason. It's to prepare us for the battle. Read on. Verse 57. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Read on. Verse 58. Elias, for being zealous and fervent for the law, was taken up into heaven. Go ahead. Ananias, Azarias, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. Mm -hmm. Verse 60. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. Go ahead. Verse 61. Verse 61. Mm -hmm. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So it says, none that put their trust in the Mosai shall be overcome. We are not going to be overcome. Right? Um, from there, let me get Nehemiah. Nehemiah 4, verse 1 to 11. Nehemiah 4, verse 1 to 11. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, reading from verse and, 1. And, and you know what I learned, what, what we can learn from, um, you know, the, the different movements that, um, that uh, like the Black Panther, mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey, name me some others, Marcus Garvey, um, Nat Turner, right. you know, um, you know, those movements who we have seen, because what? We can use that for our learning. Because we see the attempts of our enemy and how they go about infiltrating and trying to take down right. black groups. You know, we, we can learn from that. And we see the mistakes that our forefathers have made. And we can use that because what? We are what? We are blameless when we keep the commandments. So, from there, get me near my four. One, yes, go ahead. About the Marcus Garvey movement. Marcus Garvey was betrayed, I think, by his driver, which pretty much was... Is was or was his own person, person his own right, people. Exactly, exactly. You understand? So and the, that's a that's a strategy that the enemy use. They always try to use our people to infiltrate. Similar to the Tuskegee experiment. Mm -hmm. They use a black nurse to actually go there and deceive the men, mm -hmm. thinking yeah. that they are getting treatment for syphilis when in fact they are actually observing how syphilis um acts on the body when it goes untreated. And they did a similar thing in Guatemala. They actually injected syphilis into the local the locals there so we just need to be mindful how the enemy operates and what mm -hmm. we need to do we need to be versed in the scriptures so, so we um, are we are gonna we are gonna make it possible you know um our very own people is what mm -hmm. is gonna make it because we even with, with yeah. judas you know the romans enemy. didn't have anything christ was blameless yeah. and even when they came with false witnesses even when they came with accusation <laughs> herod was still able yeah, to see through that to say well you know it's out of hatred and envy yeah. that they delivered him so um that's why we have to watch ourselves we have to watch our spirits because the scriptures did said in matthew 10 that we read 
many shall betray one another you know and the leadership went over the different signs of betrayal you know the you being bitter not being able to handle correction you know separating yourself you know those are some of the examples so we have to watch those signs so that we don't develop that spirit of hatred um to what to want to betray to want to go be the ones who are now on social media speaking evil right so nehemiah Nehemiah chapter 4, 4 verse 1 reading from verse 1 but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews so you see the kind of temperament and nature that our enemies have when we start to build as a people when we start to build our enemies what get what they are they have wrath they don't like to see that thing you know they would make statements like we need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps mm -hmm. and as soon as we start to come together to build it's a problem yeah. just like with Tulsa exactly I mean that community thrived for years self-sufficient the fought the money circulated within Tulsa for what I think it was like two years before it actually went out and it was a thriving community even when American the American economy was collapsing they were still thriving and guess what then they said no these niggas we need to get rid of them exactly. because they are thriving and the fault of Tulsa is that we never had the commandments right so um, yeah read that from the top verse 1 Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1 but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews so when when you see last Passover you have five key Israelites looking you see the imagery you see you know it's it's growing mm -hmm. they are not sitting down not doing anything they're having their councils they are planning ways and devices how to come to what to disrupt what we're doing to sending what to sending persons to infiltrate to want to disrupt the movement that's why we we have to understand the time the scripture says a wise man understand time and judgment right so read on continue verse 2 and he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? I, I was watching the, the it's a Memphis, um, one of the first Memphis camp, or is it, was it men's conference in Memphis? And we went out with 60, 60 minutes. 60 minutes, yeah, he right. He said, this is yeah. not even a plan. Uh, yeah, that, that the, there was one Edomite who made a statement that says that, um, what are we talking, talking about? about right, yeah, because I mean, 60 men, that's like, no. Yeah, exactly. So, we, you see us, we start to, pretty weak, you know, but we start to build now. Now we start to get everyone's attention. We start to get everyone's yeah. attention. We start to get the Christian's attention, the Muslim community attention. We start to get the politician's attention. He said, where are these men? These people really growing strong now. There we go. You know, continue. Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? So 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 based on the state that we, we are in as a people, um, that's why Ezekiel had to say, Can these bones really live? You know, based on the state that we have to really pull our people out of it's going to take much work right oh uh yes josiah it's uh we're at um what nehemiah 4 nehemiah 4, nehemiah 4 and verse, verse, verse 2 verse 2 nehemiah 4 verse 2 all right let's read that again from the top no verse verse 2 mm -hmm. nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2 and he spake before his brethren and the army of samaria and said what do these feeble jews will they fortify themselves will they sacrifice will they make an end in a day so they say whatever we're doing it's not going to endure it's not going to everything that black people try to do it's going to fall apart but people are gonna realize and say oh this thing is really taking mo it's really gaining momentum it's really growing the women are in order the men are in order 
No, they really have our attention now. Right, <laughs> you know? Exactly. We'll continue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Go ahead. Verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by Yeah, him. because we, we really pay attention to the news. Because I've been, pay, I've been following the Gleaner locally. And, you know, there is over a thousand divorce so far for the month of... Since January until now. Jamaica. Over a thousand. Here in Jamaica. Serious? Yeah. Wow. Um... Every 100,000 Jamaican, 46 of those 100,000 Jamaican is, is uh, murdered every year. We lead this, the cases of homicides um, more so than the Caribbean and Latin America. Um, it, honestly, it, it just weighs on your spirit when you really watch the news, when you see the, the level of corruption and the hatred and the, the, the killing that you see going on. You, when these nations look at us and how we live, you know, it's like we have no hope. But this is our hope. The truth is our hope. That's right? The truth is our hope. And to see how we are reviving our people through the commandments, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, officer, because as I talk about that, that they're, they're, as I said, the enemy is always watching and see what is going on. Because Bill Gates came here what, a few months ago. He has never been here before. Mm -hmm. Met with the Prime Minister and Bill Gates, as we all know, is beast, is, is steering the um the whole disease, the whole COVID thing. Mm -hmm. Because he had he had some kind of a conference some years ago as to how to actually um disable the thought of I think it was religious thought in the brain. Mm -hmm. And he is devising something. This is something that he came before in Congress. I think either Congress or CIA. CIA, I think it was. And they see what is happening here because they are watching us closely. And they want to devise, they want to put things in place to actually hinder the growth mm -hmm. or to eliminate it altogether. But we are being backed by the most high, so there's no matter what they come with, they are going to fail. Exactly. What verse here? Verse 3. Go ahead. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. They start to mock us. Read on. Verse 4. Hero. Hear, oh, hear, O oh, our God, for we are despised, and turn their approach upon their own head, and give them a, for a prey in the land of captivity. What verse is that? Verse 4. Go ahead. Verse 5. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 6. So build we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. So the people, and that's what we have to do. We must have a mind to work. Because what, once we start to work, once we start to put our hands to the plow, you're going to have a lot of enemies. There are going to be people and, and systems in place to, what, to want to hinder us. Read on. Verse 7. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. Then they were very wroth. Read on. Verse 8. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. So that's what they're conspiring to do. Because we see, we see in the history of our forefathers, the history, and it's a pattern. Every time it happens, when what? When we try to restore our race, when we try to restore our people, Right? Because they what? They know that we are God's chosen. They know that whose place is it to rule on this earth? It's us. It's us. Are we the ones fighting for rulership on the earth? No. We are not on the world councils of, 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 of nations, you know, trying to what? To gain momentum economically, to take over another race. We are the ones, you know, but that's our place. And they understand once we start to build that what? The kingdom of heaven will be restored to Israel once again. Read on. Verse 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night. So that's what we have to do. We are watchmen. We are setting a watch. On what? We're being vigilant. We're watching. Continue. We're being circumspect. Blameless. These sons of God in this crooked generation. Read on. And set a watch against them day and night because of them. Verse 10. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish 
so that we are not able to build the wall. Verse 11. So, so we can't think about the um, disadvantages that we have. You know, um, we can't allow... We, 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 have to, we have to work with the Most High Spirit. Because that's why Ezekiel said, can these bones really live? You know, to re based on the state that we are in, to revive our people. Read on. Verse 11. And our adversaries said... They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And cause the work to cease. And that's what you're going to have people doing. We cannot be, we cannot be here not, um, not understanding the condition of the battle. That the more that we build is the more hindrance we're going to, is the more, um, what do you call it? Obstacles. It's, it's the more obstacles we're going to face is the more opposition we're going to face. We must be aware of that. Read on. Verse 12. Read, jump down to 17 now. Verse 17. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, were every one with one of his hands wrought in, wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. And the weapon that we, we now have to, what, to use is what? The scriptures. The sword. The sword of the spirit, which is the word. Read on. Verse 18. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so build it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Go ahead. Verse Go ahead. 19. Read. Jump down to 23. Verse 23. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put afore, put off our clothes, saying that everyone put them off for washing so that's how dedicated yeah. they were to the work right to the point where it was so much work and fight and and um the battle and the opposition that what they didn't even have time <laughs> you know <laughs> to seize from the work to, to as it, as it says see, save that when that everyone put off for washing um jump over to chapter 6 verse 1 chapter 6 verse 1 Nehemiah, um, yeah, go ahead. Nehemiah read. chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Gershom the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. Read on. That, San, sorry, that Sanballat and Gershom sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. But they thought to do mischief. Right? Continue. Verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work. So you, you may have people that come peaceably, and you think that they are for our interests. You think that they are for our interests, but their, their intent is to what? To do us mischief. Right? Read on. So that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Whilst I leave it and come down to you. Oh, so they wanted to distract Nehemiah from the work. Read on. Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. And I answered them after the same manner. Verse 5. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in the like manner. The fifth time mm -hmm. with an open letter in his hand. Verse 6. Wherewith was written. It is reported among the heathen. And Gashmu said it. That though that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. So they try to compel him now, using what? A fear tactic. Right? Read on. Verse 7. Because what? It was all about disrupting the world. They see that what? Nehemiah wasn't giving him the time and the day. So they start to what now? To use fear tactic. Now continue. Verse 7. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach at thee at Jerusalem, preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according because, to... Because, look, um, Persian and Mede was now in rulership. They were the leading kingdom. They were the one, the, the, the kingdom the most I put up, over us. For us now to raise up a king, that would what? That would be called yeah, 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 insurrection yeah. or treason. You understand? But they were coming saying that this is the report from the king, from the nations. Read on. And now shall it be report and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now therefore and let us take counsel together. 
Verse 8, right. then, I said un, then I sent unto them, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest. So Nehemiah saw, Nehemiah was able to, you know, see that these men, it's just a tactic that they were using. It wasn't true. Read on. But thou feignest them out of thine own heart. He knew because Nehemiah wasn't any punk. Nehemiah was, he, he served the king. You know, he knew, he already knew if this was true. The king wouldn't want to come to have counsel. If I know that there are men that are causing insurrection, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. There you go. I'm going to just deploy my, my armies. That's right. You know, continue. Because by the end of the day, what happened? Remember, they got liberty to go, go back and to, build. Right. Nehemiah understood that. Nehemiah sat with the king. The king granted um, liberty for us to go back to build. But these men, they were using fear tactic. Right? Continue. Verse 9. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from and the that's world. what they want. People going to come with all kind of um, fear tactic to want to disrupt so that what? Our hands get weak to the plow. Continue. That it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. And that's what we have to pray. When we get, you know, weary in this truth, we must pray for the most High to so strengthen our feet, strengthen our hands so what? we can continue to do the work and continue to do much greater work. Continue. Verse 10. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delilah. Delilah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The son of the son of Metabil, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. <laughs> Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. So Nehemiah got word that they, are, they, they, they want to come to slay him. Now listen, what, listen to what Nehemiah said. Read on. Verse 11, And I said, Should such a man as I flee? Read. And who is there that being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life. Go ahead. I will not go in. Yeah, and, and we, we've seen that in, in, in Maccabees as well, where it says, lay down your life for the truth. Um, there's one scripture in First Maccabees 13. We're going to get that. Remind me to get that. First Maccabees 13. Right. Second, no, second Maccabees 13, verse 8. Remind me to get to that next. All right. Um... Pick up from, pick up, where you left off here? Uh, verse, was that? verse 9, 10, you're at 10 now? Yeah, was that 10? no, 11, read 11. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 11, and I said, Should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? To save his life. You know what, I think it's good to just tie that in right here. Um, go to... First Maccabees. First or second? First. Uh, let me see. Let me check it. Yeah, first. Yeah, first Maccabees 13 and 5. The book of First Maccabees. That's why Christ said, if you, if you save your life, you shall lose it. You know, if you lose your life, you shall, um, you, you shall save. You shall be saved, right? No, let, let's read that. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 5. Now therefore be it far from me that I should spare mine own life in any time of trouble. So guess what? When we see times of trouble, you know, things start to rise up. Trials we haven't even expect to happen is going to happen. You know, when those times comes, in times of trouble, are we going to make haste? Or are we going to hold it down? Are we going to stay faithful to the Mosai? No, we understand this is the truth yeah. because we're reading in the scriptures yeah, exactly. and it's going to tell us the things that we are going to go through and also clearly there are things that we see we have seen came to pass have been fulfilled so you, we got to take this bible real we are we, we are at the right place you know so it says what um you should spare my own life in times of trouble so there's going to be times of trouble times of trouble are ahead read on for I am not better than my brethren. So we are not better than our brethren. My life is not better than yours. Our duty is to serve the people. Our duty is to serve the flock. That's what we are being called in this time and ordained to do. Read on. Verse 6. Doubtless I will avenge my nation. Guess what? For all the evil that has been done to our people. You know how you can avenge a nation? 
by keeping these commandments, being an example to your people, and do the work. Right? Continue. And the sanctuary, and our wives and our children. Because Read on. For all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of, ev of very malice. Of very malice. Read on. Verse 7. Now as soon as the people heard these words. And as soon as the people hear these words. Read. Their spirit revived. Their spirit revived. That's how exhortation works. That's why it says exhort one another daily. Because when we hear these words, it's being broken down. We watch the classes. That's what it does to our spirit. Right? It revives us. Now go back to Nehemiah. We're left off. I read verse 11. Uh, yeah, pick up. The book of Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 12. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid. Do you see? So there is going to be people come among us being hired book of Malone, right? Mm. He's hired. I mean, how, if you know this is not the truth, why you spend so much time, effort to do videos, and money. to follow us? Right? We know that he's hired because yeah. there the, wasn't there an article that says that um, he has been hired by the, the, the uh, chop the, for the, the, N, N, the NBA to, to what? Right, to, 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 to educate to, the NBA to, players. Right, <laughs> to dissuade them from becoming right. members of Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew, right, exactly. So that, that's a clear example, just a case in point. Read on. There, therefore was he, verse 13, Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so, and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. So they're waiting for us to do what? To slip. Because they know once we're in sin, that's where they have an advantage. But once we stay faithful, once we stay in the spirit, the Most High is going to prosper our hands. Read on. Verse 14. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat. So that's what we have to do. We have to pray for, for, for pray to the Most High about our enemies. Read on. According to, their, according to these, their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets, and, and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. That would have put me in fear. Like the brother who came. He, he said, he looked at me sternly and said, I'm going to do everything in my power to stop you men yeah exactly we're gonna get intimidated <laughs> <laughs> you know but continue verse 15 so the wall was finished in the 20th and fifth day of the month so the forefathers ended their work they finished the wall they finished the building right the work that we're doing it must be complete accomplished it must be completed read on in 50 and two days go ahead verse 16 and it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes. As it says in Revelation, when they see us rise up, it's going to put fear on them. Read on. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. You see that? So this is being done by our God. We, we are not the one. We are not the one. All honor and praise to the Mosai. It says it's not by might. Not by power, but by the Most High Spirit, that we will get the work done. It's going to get done, whether with or without me. But the Most High is going to raise up men and women and um, to do the work. Right? Continue. Verse seventeen. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. All right. From there, let's drop down. Get me Micah four and verse eight. Micah 4 and verse 8. Press for time. Micah 4 and verse 8. Let's read that. Read. The book of Micah chapter 4 and verse 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So it says, the kingdom shall come to who? The daughter of Jerusalem. So it says, when the scripture says, thy kingdom come, it's coming to who? The daughter of Jerusalem. The daughter of Jerusalem. Read on. Verse 9. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? So it says, why dost thou cry out aloud? Because what? While we're building, while we're going to be faced with opposition and trials, affliction, persecution, we shouldn't cry out aloud. Read on. Is there no king in thee? We have to look to our king. And who is the king? Christ. The king is Christ, our black messiah. Read on. 
is there is that counselor perished is our counselor perish right continue for pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail okay so now the scripture is saying what pangs have taken thee as a woman in, tra in, travail. in travail so are we prepared for the battle this year we have we must expect that every year it, the Mosa is making an analogy with a woman in travail who is about to deliver who is about to give birth right what what does she feels and experience contractions those contraction it 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 it, it comes in different um in intervals and as the child is about to um as the, the, the woman is about to give child the contractions gets more and more closer right it's the same thing we must expect that it's going to get harder now read that again at that point micah chapter 4 verse 9 now why dost thou cry out aloud is there no king in thee thy counselor no is thy counselor is thy counselor perished we done for pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail so he says pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail read verse 10 now be in pain and labor to bring forth O daughter of zion so he said be in pain be in pain we must what we must understand that the, the, through much tribulation we're going to get the kingdom every man and woman as it's as we read in nehemiah 6 it says all the people had a mind to work we must be working to what to build our people build our nation read on like a woman in travail like a woman in travail that's how it's going to be read on for now shalt thou go forth out of the city so so that that's the point that's what i wanted it says like a woman in travail get me john 6 26 to 27 so while you understand that it's going to get hard every year, you must develop in, in, in faith, in, in understanding, um, you know, the be developed. We cannot be carrying, carrying um, the, our faults and our shortcomings over into another year. We, we want to have to deal with that. We want to have to build our faith. We want to have to grow and progress in the truth spiritually read on the book of john chapter 6 and verse 26 jesus answered them and said verily 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 i say unto you ye seek me not because he saw the miracles but because he did eat of the loaves and were filled mm -hmm. go ahead verse 26 so our people we were we they were following christ not because of the spiritual things that he was imparting unto them but because of what? Because of meat, the meat, meaning the loaves, the, the Christ work miracles. He he turned the, what was it? The, no, the five, the five loaves, loaves and three fishes, yeah, two fishes. Yeah. yeah, multiplied, and he fed a thousand. And there was much that left over. Read on. Verse 27. Labor not for the meat so which it says, perisheth. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Because sometimes we're laboring more. To, to, to receive material gain more than how we are laboring in the truth. We put in more bricks in the mo in Kisa's oh, yeah. kingdom mm -hmm. more than the bricks in our kingdom. You understand? So it says labor what? Labor not for the meat which perisheth. It's just as the parable says, um, don't store up your treasures on earth. Mot is going to rust it. Man is going to come in and steal. The tre the, what we should be laboring for is what? Continue but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life so what is that meat let's get that precept john 4 34. so it said we shouldn't be laboring for the meat that perisheth we should be laboring for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life Let, what's that let's read that the book of john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me so that's the meat to do the will of the mosai that sent us Sorry, the, do the will of the Mosai that sent Christ. And what is the Mosai's will? Basic scripture. Give me that in Psalms 40 and 8. So that's the meat. So labor not for the meat that perisheth. The book of Psalm chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will. I what? I delight to do thy will. I delight. You must have joy in this truth to do the will. Right? You must be passionate about serving the Mosai. About serving, about... You must be passionate about loving your people. Read on. 
Oh my God. Read. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy law is within my heart. No, from there, um, go back to, yeah, go back to John 6. 6. Uh -huh. Verse 27. The book of John chapter 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. Everlasting life. Read on. Which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him, the, for him hath God the Father sealed. Right. Um, Isaiah 26 and 17. Isaiah 26, 17. The book of Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 17. Go ahead. Like a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery. So we are drawing near near and much we are drawing near and nearer to what time? The time of the end. The time of our rulership. The time of our kingdom. The time to receive the the, 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 the precious promises made with the covenant the covenant with our forefathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right? That time is is drawing near but while that time drawing near, it says like a woman with child drawing near the time of her delivery is what? Is in pain. Is in pain. It's not going to be easy. It's going to come through much tribulation. Read on. And crieth out in her pangs, so have, ye, so have we been in thy sight, O so Lord. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. Read on. Verse 18. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, we have as it were brought forth wind. We have as it were brought forth wind. 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 Mm -hmm. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Read on. Verse 19. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. That, that's the, the Ezekiel, right? Yeah. Read on. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Read on. Come on, come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Read 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So, so guess what? The, the, the history of our people, the atrocities of our people have been... Um, they, they want it to be lost and forgotten. No one is dealing with it. No one is teaching it. We haven't gotten reparation. We haven't gotten therapy. But there is a God and he remembers. And the, the, our time is coming. Our time of delivery is coming. Now, from there, let me get... Let me get Ephesians 5.15. I'll be able to get through this today. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So we must walk circumspect. Right? He says, see that we walk not... See, we, see that we walk circumspectly. Read. Not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we must redeem the time. Right? We must redeem the time. It says, for the days are evil. You would be, it, read from the top to make a point. Ver, um, Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse, verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So it, it, it's only... It's a foolish thing for you to see the times that are ahead, the classes, the leadership is preparing us with, the things that are coming to pass, and you prepare not. It says that's a foolish thing. We want to prepare. We want to what? To build our faith up so that when these things come to pass, we don't what? We don't, we don't make haste when, it, when it's troublous times. Read on. See, that, see then that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Let's get a precept for that. Ecclesiastes 8.5. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. 
the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5 whoso keepeth the commandment shall fear shall feel no evil thing and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and the judgment so it says a wise man's heart will discern discern time and judgment right we must redeem the time we must be able to discern the time we are in it's no time to be wasting every opportunity you have in this truth is not to play around is every t opportunity that we have because it's as it says in Ezra 9 and 8 is a very small season we, we have of grace right so it's no time for us to waste in the truth right we gotta have to build ourselves up um from there let me get second Ezra 7 verse 57 I'm trying to cut down some of the notes I have here um, yeah, let's read that. The book of Second Ezra, chapter seven, and verse fifty-seven. Seven. seven. Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse fifty-seven. Then answered he me and said, "This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight." He says, "Which man shall born upon the earth shall fight." Read on. Verse fifty-eight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. So what is, when it says we shall be overcome, get, let me get Romans 6 and 12. He shall be overcome. So it says there's a battle that we must fight, that we shall fight. But if we be overcome, let's, let's get that. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So sin, in fighting off sin is the greatest battle. We cannot afford to be overcome by our sins. Read on. Verse, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep reading. Let not sin therefore reign in their mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Meaning, yield means to do what? Surrender. It says, neither yield ye your members as, in, as what? Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Because guess what? When you sin, it's a choice that you make. Your 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 heal. When you heal, meaning you surrender. You lost so, patience. Right? So continue. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Our members are instruments of righteousness to God. What verse is that? That was verse 13. Read on. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. So sin should not have dominion over you. That's a choice for us all to make. Are you going to live righteous? As I say, it's either you decide that you, whether you have that provision that you stored up, right? You haven't really, you haven't really decided, haven't come to terms that, look, you're going to put off certain sins, right? But it says committing sin, it's a choice. Committing sin is you have to consciously heal to that. You, when you've lost patience, you stop fighting. You don't want to be disciplined anymore in the truth. Read on. That, For, that's, 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 that's 14? That's 14. All right, that's, that's what I wanted. Go back to 2 Ezra now. We're reading down to 60. The book of 2 Ezra. Reading from reading the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 58. That if he become that if he be that if he be overcome by sin, read, he shall suffer as thou hast said. Read. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Exactly. No, let me get Jude 19. In fact, let me let me not let me not get that. Um let me go, let me go real quick. Let me go to 1 Peter 5, verse 8. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil... As the scripture says, um, be not ignorant of the devil's devices. Right? Here we are in a fight, and you are asleep... Um, I think it was Captain Shemaya who um, shared in a class the, the video with the two gazelles fighting. And here the, the, the lion, the roaring lion, enclosing in on them. And, and what happened? 
yes exactly so we don't want to be caught up in our sins caught up in what biting and devouring each other as it says in galatians 5 read on and you have a common enemy that is there. and there's a common enemy <laughs> enemy that is there we choose to be enemy of um to our brothers not dealing with what the fact that there is a roaring lion right. seeking to devour read on uh, be sober be vigilant because you're so it says be sober be conscious know the times redeem the time know what time we're in we're in a time of war you understand we we must fight this this is the only time that we have the choices that we make is going to seal our destiny are we going to what receive the promises and the blessings of the kingdom are we going to be, receive everlasting damnation it's not there's no time to be to lose focus and be distracted now is the time that it, we're going to have to make the biggest decision ever in our life. Like the, the brother who came saying the worst decision he made was to join us. But the greatest decision for us to make is to what? To ensure that what? We keep these commandments. We endure to the end. Read on. Be vigilant. And be vigilant too. Mean watch. Because what? Your, your, your enemy, don't be ignorant of his devices. We've seen how what? We've seen what the white man did in um, with the different movements, right? We've seen um, how our enemy and the tactics that they use to do what? To disrupt. They're going to come with, as it says, secret plots and popular persuasion. You know, you're going to hear, us, hear about us more in the media. And we, there's going to be much evil and hatred. Secret plots and popular procedure to do what? To sway the minds of the people. To make it seem as if we are evil. We are a cult. But what are we really doing? We are raising up our race. Raising up our people. Read on to verse 9. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So, are you prepared for the battle this year? Will you be here next year? You know? Because what? Your enemy is coming. You know, and therefore, let, let's, um, that uh, verse 9, uh, right? Verse 8. Verse 8. All right, read to 9. Verse 9. Whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that... So it says, whom resist steadfast. That's how you resist. By being steadfast in the faith. Read on. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the same afflictions. We all go through the same trials. The most I, you know, as it says in First Corinthians, is it 10? That on 13, there's no temptation taking you, but such as come unto man. So, we all are fighting the same battle. There's a brother, there's a sister that's fighting the same battle. There's a brother, there's a sister that is, is battling lust, is, is battling hatred. You know, uh, all the spirits that we, we fight, but we must ensure that... Um, what verse? I lose my trailer thought. What? Read 9 again. That's where you're at, right? Oh, yeah, nine. Go ahead. First Peter chapter 5, verse 9. Who resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That are in the world. Read um, Ephesians 6 and 12 real quick. We're going to close out with this. Ephesians 6 and verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. You have rulers, you have people in high places that is devising evil against our people to keep us in sin. Right? Read on. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, so we are, we, are, we are fighting. The Mosai calls us to be soldiers, warriors. But our armor is what? Is rather spiritual. Our armor is what? Continue. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Withstand in the evil day. These days are evil. The hearts of men are cold. It's perilous times. You know? It's so amazed. I'm so amazed when I watch the news and see the level of um, hatred, and the level of wickedness that we see out there among our people. So it says the times are evil. Read on. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt 
about with truth. All right, so let's see what the loins is going into. Um, First Peter is one and three. So this is a spiritual. This is a spiritual war. Therefore, we have we must put on our spiritual armor. First Peter is one thirteen. The book of First Peter chapter one verse thirteen. Wherefore, gird up the loin, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it says we have to gird up our lines, gird up our mind. That's what it's going into. Go back to Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Psalms 119, 142. That's, that's the laws going into. Read on. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Deuteronomy 6, 25. That's the commandments it's going back to. Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. That's um, Hebrews 4, 1. It goes into the gospel being what? The laws and commandments. Um, let's get that real quick. Hebrews 4 and 1. The gospel of peace. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into rest, and of you should seem to come short of it. Go ahead. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. You see that? The word is what? The gospel. The laws. That's what was preached to our forefathers. Right? So that's the gospel. Read on. Finish that out. Prophet them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. All right. So real quick, go back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Verse 15. And your feet shod with preparations of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Great peace have they that love thy law. Read on. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Romans um, 10, 17 real quick. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. Let's get that in Romans 10, 17. Book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then faith, so then faith come cometh thereby, let me read that again. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Mm, so that's what faith is. It cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Read on. Go back, go back to Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. And your feet, no. sorry, 16. 16 right. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So he's saying, hearing the word, in applying the word, it, the, in this truth, this war is going to be like you are, you are on the battlefield, right? And the, it says the darts, the fiery darts, that mean what? Do, those are arrows. The enemy is going to shoot at us. Many arrows, many darts. It says fiery darts, right? That's what we must endure. So we must have our shield up, right? The shield of faith. Studying, hearing the word, applying the word. Read on. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It tells you what the, the, the sword is, the Word of God. That's what we use. That's what the devil tried to do when he came to Christ. What, what, did, what, did, what was Christ using to fight off the devil? The Word. He quoted the scriptures. He applied them. Right? But it also says he take the helmet of salvation. Psalm 71, verse 3. Let's close up with that. Psalm 71, verse 3. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Psalm 71 verse 3. Be thou my strong habitation, where unto I may continually resort. That thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. So that's the helmet of salvation. If most I have given us commandments to save us. Right? Um... Let me see. All right, so we're going to close out with that. Yeah, we're going to close out with that today. Uh, all praises to the Mosai Israel. Uh, I don't know if there's any question. Uh, in fact, let, let's, just, um, let's just announce that we have three schools here in Jamaica, in Mandeville. For those of you, who, if you have family members here in the islands, you know, um, please direct them to our, the website. Our contact information is there.
because I know I learned that there are some persons that may not know me. Yeah, there are persons who reach out to us not knowing that we have um, a congregation or a school located here. Um, we are in Mandeville, we are in Montego Bay, we are in um, Spanish Town. All right, so call our numbers 536-9328. Our contact information is on our website. All right, so all praises to the Mosai family. Um, all right, so as Bishop says, um, stay faithful. Um, most of all, stay in the spirit. <laughs> I know I'm missing, I'm, I'm butchering it, but all praises to the Mosai. <laughs> Uh, we're going to sign out. I don't see any questions, so we're going to sign out. All praises, Benjamin. Mr. Sheila. All praises, sis. You might continue to endure Israel. Somebody asked a question. What's the, oh, what's the question? What's the PayPal for your school? Oh, we don't oh, have any PayPal. Oh, we don't have any PayPal. But you can contact the number and we'll we'll um we'll share more information on that. Toya, all praises, sis. Likewise, have a blessed day and a productive one. Samo Samoni. Shalom sis. The address in Spanish Town, 71 oh. to 72 Ferdinita Boulevard. That's in Greendale. And uh, Mandeville is three and a half Caledonia Mall, Mandeville. My sister Eva, Toya. We need uh, here in Belize. But there's a congregation in Belize. We need here. Yes, there's a congregation in Belize. Um, I don't know if their contact information is on the website. But um, you can you can reach out you can reach out to us sis. you can reach out on our Facebook page um, or you can contact our number five three six nine three two eight and we'll be able to direct you. Yeah, we have we have a few people we have a few persons out there in um, Belize should be able because yeah, leadership went to Belize. Yeah, yeah. right. Mr. Denise, Toya. Eva, all praises. Thank you, thank you, um, Josiah. Stay faithful, stay focused, but most of all, all right, stay yeah, that, yeah, 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 that was it. All praises, all praises. <laughs> no questions, all right, see now. Mr. Sade. So I saw no questions. All right, so with that, Israel, uh, we're going to close out. Most in Christ, please. Shalom, most in Christ, please. Shalom, shalom.